One of the most valuable and best ways to use velocity in your training is to create context and see what your recent history is compared to today's training. So if today you're doing your bench press, you want to know what velocities you hit on those weights as you go through your warm-up, for example, or your working sets, what your velocities today are compared to your recent history. Now, it's pretty tricky to remember all your velocities across every weight for all the exercises you do. So instead, we want to save it in some sort of a logbook or a database. Now, unfortunately, not all velocity-based training software allows that to be done easily and allows you to access that in real time during your training. So what I've done is over on vbtcoach.com, if you enter your details in and register for the newsletter, we'll send you a copy of our VBT logbook for free. You make a copy at home, you can use that logbook to then log all the exercises you do, the velocities, the weights, the reps, even the RPEs you're doing, and gain context on how you're training. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to use that logbook to get the most out of your training. So the first thing you want to do is you want to go in and make a copy of that logbook. You'll see the first page has instructions. It'll have links to these videos that we're watching right now. The next tab is the exercise tab. So this green section will be all the exercises that are available in your logbook when we move to the next sheet. So you can change these, delete them and start again. You can change the names. It doesn't really matter. It just helps you sort and filter your exercises. On the next sheet, it's called the VBT logbook. In here, we've got some example data in here. So you can go ahead and just delete that, first of all. So once you've done that, is what we want to do is we want to enter the date the exercise, the weight, and the reps for each, each every single set that you want to record. So today it is the 5th of November. I'll enter that in. Select my exercise from the drop down. Today I did uh, trap bar deadlifts. I did 90 kilos for five reps. Then what I want to do is this next section will be your velocity data. Now you only have to do the best rep velocity, but if you want to do last rep and RPE as well, you can log those too. So best rep was uh, 0.92 meters per second. The last rep of the set, this will give me my fatigue number, was 0.76 meters per second. RPE was about a seven, it was a pretty easy set. From there, what you'll see is no data's come up yet. That's because we haven't got any contextual history to compare this set of deadlifts to. So if we go ahead and enter more sets, so what you can do is you can just copy and paste. Now what's nice about this sheet as well is I'm doing it on my laptop right now, but it also works on mobile, so it's quite mobile friendly. You'll just need to make sure you've got a Gmail account and that you've got the Google Sheets app installed on your phone. So let's go ahead and enter some more sets from today. We can copy and paste to do that. I did five sets, uh, four sets of deadlift rather. So 90, 100, 105, and then 110. All for five reps. And then I'll go ahead and enter the velocities and the RPEs. Cool. And so what we'll see is we'll start getting data. Now, we still don't have any seven day or 30 day contextual data for these sets because we haven't done those weights on that exercise before. So for example, if I, I'll put in some example data here. Now say I come in next week on the 12th of the 11th, 12th of the 11th, 12th of the 11th, 21, and I make that a trap by deadlift again. And again, we do 90 kilos. What we'll see is we've now got a contextual data uh, automatically filling in that seven day and 30 day cell. Again, we did five reps and this time I did 0.93 meters per second for my best rep and we get that contextual data. So what we're seeing here is on my seven day average, I'm today's velocity for my best rep is 101% of my seven day average. And it's the same for the 30 day average because they are the same at the moment. We've only got one week's worth of data. As you go through this though, and you complete more sets, so let's say we copy all of these here, did the same progression series again, just on a different date, and let's enter some new numbers. So 0.88, and then I did for best rep 0. Uh, maybe 0.71 and then 0. Uh, 0.65. What we can see is we start getting contextual data. So those first two sets, the 90 and the 100 kilo in this example, are both above what I did last week. And in this example, they're above the 30 day average as well. That 30 day average becomes more valuable the more data you've got. So as you do more sets, that 30 day average will start collecting more sets of say 90 kilos on the trap bar deadlift. So you can see how your trend is going because you might get some zigzagging and some up and down on a week to week basis. But if that trend, if you're slightly above your 30 day average, that's usually a pretty good sign. Now to get percentage loss and the estimated RPE, you'll need to enter your last rep velocities and your RPE numbers. So. For last rep, let's uh, give them some values 
let's say they're all the same as last time. So let's just copy those and paste them in. And we'll get our, our velocity loss and we'll get our estimated, uh, estimated RPE. Now, if you've got an, a, a percentage fatigue under, eight, under 10%, then you won't get an estimated RPE because that set was too easy according to this model. But that's basically the logbook. So that's what we want to do. That's how we want to use it. Collect data over time. And what's really cool is if, say, we now do on another day, we do our bench press. Now we're going to do this on the 9th of the 11th and the bench press, and we do, again, 90 kilos, it won't pull in any data from the trap bar deadlift. So those 90 kilo sets are specific to the exercise and the weight. That combination is what gives us the contextual data because my 90 kilo bench press might be a lot harder than my 90 kilo trap bar deadlift. So those two would not be comp comparable next to each other. So I want to use those separately and compare the 90 kilo bench press just to other sets of 90 kilo bench press. Now this is uh, color-coded. So sets under 92.5% will go red. Sets between 92.5 and 97.5, I think it is, will go yellow. And anything above 97.5 is going to be green. So green light, happy days. We're close enough to our 30 day and our seven day average. We can continue and proceed as normal. If you're slightly below, so in that yellow zone, maybe start asking yourself some questions. Am I a little fatigued today? Am I a little sore and tired? Maybe you need to be um, maybe backing off today slightly lower RPEs or take a rep or two off your working sets, maybe even leave a working set in the tank and don't do that today. If your numbers are red, you're definitely or almost definitely going to be in some sort of other lifting with low intent, so you need to try a little bit harder in your training, or you're potentially um, fatigued and a little bit burnt out. And so maybe that's a bit of an indicator that you're a little too tired today and shouldn't probably be doing a hard session. You should maybe dial back, maybe do a taper workout, maybe adjustings, maybe do some sort of different strategy or look at your recovery techniques to get a little more out of your body. Maybe you need to make some adjustments to your program to continue making progress and not just burn yourself out. These aren't hard and fast rules. I'm not telling you how to train based on those colors. They're just suggestions. You would incorporate this velocity data, this context into other methods. Whether you train with percentages or RPEs or some other model, you would incorporate this velocity data into that system to make better decisions. So you wouldn't throw out your RPEs and RRs. You incorporate this and go, well, okay, RPE is a little high, velocity is a little low, I'm way below my 30-day or my 7-day average. Maybe today's not a good day. Maybe I should back it off or take it easy or only do less volume up the top or drop some accessory exercises. Those sort of decisions are what you and your coach can make as you're going. But this piece just allows you to see what your velocity is on your given exercises at given weights over time. And so you can create a big bank and a log of these over time. Now, a couple of hacks for the sheet. You'll start, if you start using this pretty consistently, you'll start accumulating a lot of data and you'll have to do a lot of scrolling on your phone or on your laptop to get through it. So what you can do is instead of deleting sets and starting again, what you can do is hide them. So if we select a number of rows here and we right click on them, there's an option here to hide the rows. So if you just click hide, they're still there. You've still got that data, which is going to be valuable in part two of this series when we talk about prog progress by weight. This, they're still there, they're just hidden so that you can bring your more recent work to the top and not have to do so much, so much scrolling every time you open this spreadsheet. If you want to review those, there's little arrows there, you just click the arrows and they expand back out. Now you can do the same hide technique. If you don't care about your seven day average, for example, you can do the same thing and you can hide that column. So you can hide that and just, for example, focus on your 30 day average. If you think the estimated RPE that we're giving that we've created in this model is just way off and doesn't suit your style of training, same thing, go in there and hide it. You can hide whatever you like. Uh, if you don't use RPEs at all, just hide the RPE column, easy peasy. And again, same thing, you just bring it back by unclapsing. You'll notice there'll be a few formula-based uh, sheets in there, uh, columns rather, just hide those again um, so that they're out of the way and not distracting you. Now, you've also got the option down here over the side. You can write some notes. You can write some notes for yourself to say this set was super hard, not feeling it today, miss groove, uh, short range of motion, whatever you want in there to, to remind you why those velocities might be different or why your fatigue might be a little higher. Um, but you've also, in column P onwards, you've got the option for extra metrics. So you could, uh, if you're interested in range of motion, you could put your set average range of motion or you could put your power output or time under tension. Depending on how you train and what you want to focus on, you can add other metrics in here to refer back to as well. Now, those numbers won't automatically pull in like the velocity numbers for con context, but you do have them there so that you can look at them and refer to them again as you need to. Maybe you're working on range of motion consistency on your, on your bench press, so you can put those in um, and see that they're tracking in the right direction over time. 
Cool. So that's the Velocity Logbook. I think that's covered everything. Uh, if you have any trouble, please let me know. Get in touch with either, either via Instagram or in the comments below. Uh, I'll also have a link below to get yourself a copy of this spreadsheet. So if you just head to vbtcoach.com, it's linked below. Sign up for the newsletter. We'll send you a copy of this straight away so you can get started using this logbook, whether you're using Metric, uh, the VBT app that we're building here at Core Advantage, or a completely different one. Up to you. This logbook will help you train with good context, give you better numbers, and help you steer and nudge your training in the right direction to optimize the stresses. Good luck and happy training. <laughs>